Hello and welcome to this lesson from 40 ADC load balancer course. In the previous lessons, we learned how we can set up your own lab, configure these components, and we spoke about the network connectivity. Today, I want to speak with you about some load balancing concepts, which is dedicated to the load balancer, which will help you in configuring any load balancer. It is like the basic understanding of how load balancer is working the functionality and the use of it now let's first start by speaking about these two servers these two servers are actually called either they are called nodes or they are called the real servers real servers this is the servers in which you are trying to load balance between them this is two servers, in some cases you will have three servers or four servers, it doesn't really matter. This is all of them, each one is called the real server or a node. This server is combined together in something called real server pool. Real server pool or pool directory directly is pool server pools this you add all your real server into a pool of servers which you are going to load balance between them this virtual server ip is a virtual server it's like virtual server which you map it to this pool so you understand you might have load balancing between multiple pools each pool will require its own virtual server IP to communicate with the back end real servers in this pool. So you have a pool. This is the pool. This pool is consists of servers SRV1, SRV2, or SRV3. And all this pool is mapped to a virtual server IP which you communicate with and then it will forward the traffic to the real server pools or the real servers inside this pool this is the first thing you need to understand about the load balancer one more important concept is something called health check health health check or this is the health check for 40 ADC. If this is F5, it is called the monitor. Monitor. The idea is what? Here, this 40 ADC need to have a way, needs to have a way to check if the back end real servers are ready and available so he can forward the traffic. So what it is doing it's doing something called health check checking the availability checking the availability ability or the health of the real servers if it is available to serve the traffic maybe this will have port 80 this is a web server working on port 80. So you need to check if the connection between the 40 ADC and port 80 is available or not. If it is not, it will remove this from the pool and start forwarding the traffic to any other real servers in this pool. So you have different types of health check. You have, I will show it to you all. Uh, when we are going to do the configuration there is ICMP health check ICMP health check which will what it will do it will try to ping the servers only if there is a reply this means that this server is working fine or there is a TCP health check TCP health check which will check if you want to forward the traffic to port 80 it will just make a TCP connection to port 80 or port 22 for example if you are doing SSH and there is HTTP health check HTTP health check 
which will check the web functionality or the web services on the server if it is available to serve the traffic or not this health check have like an interval health check intervals which mean how frequently this load balancer will do this health check to check the availability of the real servers maybe he will try to ping once every five seconds if he received response it's okay he will try after five seconds again if he received response okay i will try after five seconds and just keeping health check heartbeat between these two real server and the load balancer if there is no reply for example i will try three times each two sec every two seconds to check for a reply if i don't get a reply i will consider this web server down this is what this health check means it has an interval which he will go through to check the availability of the backend servers if it is ready and available to serve the traffic it is just a way for the load balancer to check the health of the back and real servers in the pool so he can forward it to traffic or not that is health check it has different types like ICMP, TCP or HTTP and it has its own intervals all we will see when we are going to the configuration of the 40 ADC okay also one important concept as well is the load balancing method load balancing method how this 40 ADC will forward the traffic here it has many ways the most famous way is something called round robin round robin method which means the first request come I will forward to the first web server second request i will forward to the second web server third request i will forward to the third web server if there is any third real server here and i will go if all is uh, i forward i will start over the fourth request i will send to one the fifth request i will send to two sixth request i will send to three this is the round robin method it is a very famous method there are multiple methods but now due to the fact that most of the servers now are virtual servers and they all have the same capability uh, same computing same memory same everything like a replica from each other so the round robin method is the best method to use there are many other methods like least connection or fastest response fastest response or weighted all these methods has its own way of forwarding the traffic to the back end server so maybe this one replies fast so i will forward all its traffic to it the list connections this one is serving three connections while this one is serving 10 connections so i will forward to this one so it depends on the configuration you are doing on the 40 ADC how the 40 ADC will forward the traffic depending on the load balancing method you are configuring in the 40 ADC which we will see when we are doing the configuration of the load balancer as well this is the called load balancing method one also most important one of the most important functionality is something called persistence persistence which means the load balancer you know if it is an http http is a stateless protocol but we need to find a way so assume this is a chopping chopping website maybe you go to the products and choose one and two and three and now you send another request you want to go to the card to pay it doesn't make sense if the 40 ADC forward you to the second server it doesn't know which products you choose or which what wh what are you going to do your payment method or or whatever so you need the communication to be persistent on the same web server any communication from that external IP should be persistent to the same web server to the same server so you will have like it changed the stateless to a stateful communication 
keeping track of all the requests and all the responses and keep forwarding the same uh, external user to the same server there are many persistence ways one of which is the source IP which we will check this source IP and keep it going to the same server or one also most famous is cookie insert cookie insert which the 40ADC will insert a cookie when it received the connection from this external server he will forward to him set cookie for example equal one and each time set cookie uh, persistence equal one each time he will see this cookie and this cookie value he will forward it to the exact same server this is the persistence persistence means that i will keep follow uh, i will keep forwarding the same i will keep forwarding the same connections from the same external user to the same backend real server this is what is called by persistence also there is something called ssl offloading ssl offloading this means if you are doing here like an https and you want to free the computing resources from this web server from doing the encryption and decryption you can decrypt the traffic and encrypt the traffic on the 40 ADC for example here it will come and talk on port 443 doing the encryption while the backend server will communicate on port 80 so you can do the encryption and the decryption on the 40 ADC itself that is what is called SSL offloading you will generate something like a CSR certificate signing request and you will provide it to your system administrator he will sign it give it back to you and you will import it to the 40 ADC and you will start to have communication to this one on port 443 doing the encryption and the decryption and the load balancer would, would take care of all this configuration so you don't need to hold resources on the back end real server to do the encryption and the decryption so this is some of the concepts which you will need to understand if you will require to work on any load balancer you will need to understand what is health check health check what is persistence mean what is load balancing method load balancing method and what is SSL offloading offloading in that case also in case of SSL offloading you can treat your 40 ADC or your load balancer as a centralized certificate management centralized mostly this use uh, this rule is handled by web application firewalls but in case you don't have a web application firewall you can use it as a centralized certificate management certificate management you will have all your certificates here managed by 40 ADC doing all the encryption and decryption because it has a dedicated ASICs has something called dedicated, dedicated ASICs for encryption and decryption as well for encryption and decryption so you don't need to hold resources or overload the resources on this web server to do the encryption and decryption this is the most important concepts you need to understand like health check what's health check what's persistence what is the load balancing method what is SSL offloading means there is something called uh, SSL tunneling or SSL forwarding but this is not our case here so you need to understand all these four functions of any load balancer you are going to work with either 40 ADC or F5 LTM whatever you are studying or working on load balancing technologies this is what most common concepts you need to understand 
to work properly on this load balancer what is health check what's persistence what's load balancing and what's SSL of loading and how you configure each one properly depending on your back-end real servers so for example in the health check if this is a web server it doesn't make sense if you put ICMP health check because maybe the ping will reply but the HTTP services is down and we will do this scenario and test it and show you how it happens what will happen okay so I hope this has been informative for you and uh, easy nugget for you to understand and from the next lesson we will do dive deep into the configuration and start doing the configuration for 40 ADC and 48 thank you so much and see you in the next lesson